All right, hi, I'm Derek. Uh, I live in London. Uh, I'm European. We can talk about it some other time. <laughs> it's more relevant in the US uh, to explain these things. I'm PHP 7.4 release manager, um, which means that I package the latest PHP release candidates. PHP 7.4 will have one more release candidate next week. And in about three weeks' time, PHP 7.4 will be released, so yay. If you haven't tried it out with your project yet, you definitely should already, because now you still have the time to complain if it doesn't work. You can't do that after it's been released. Uh, I wrote Xdebug, and I will be talking a lot more about that, of course, during the rest of the presentation. I also host PHP Internals News as a podcast, where I talk about new features, upcoming in PHP, and other technical things related to developing PHP. I like maps, I like beer, I like whiskey, so I'm in the right place here. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to add me on Twitter or send me an email. I have a, my email address is on the last slide. There we go. So Xdebug is old software. It's 17 years old. How, how many of you are maintaining anything that is more than 10 years old? H how much do you like working on that code? <laughs> Not very much, right? It has plenty of issues. As Chris just mentioned in his opening keynote, there are well, technical debt is something that is basically everything. And as he said, it slows down changing things or improving things in Xdebug. And I see that going back in, well, making it ready for new PHP versions because uh, unlike most PHP code that you write yourself, because Xdebug hooks so much into PHP's internals, I have to change a lot more than you have to change in your project most of the time. And then on the other side, how many of you know all the 65 configuration options to Xdebug? I can't say I do, because I can't, just can't remember them. Right? I'm getting a bit old. Um, and there's lots of things in there that, 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 don't, that doesn't make the use of Xdebug easier. Then there's lots of other issues, like um, PHP, FPM, and Xdebug using the same port. I'm sure some of you have run into that at some point, right? I certainly have. Then there's some make breakpoints that are not being hit and be working on that. And, then there's the performance bits and me not having enough time to work on it. Because the Xdebug that came out for PHP 7.3 came out in April, whereas PHP 7.3 came out somewhere in December. So this isn't all going according to plan. So what I need to do, well, let's have a look at the configuration set. And I actually made it a bit shorter because instead, if you see the X, it is really Xdebug, but it didn't fit on the slides anymore. There's a bunch of them in here, for example. Oh, I just broke something. Just the screen went off, not that I need it. But, uh, everything in blue, for example, sort of contradicts with each other, right? So having code coverage running while you're trying to debug or profile makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, code coverage takes more time because more things have to do. So profiling something while you're either debugging it by hand by doing the single steps, for example, makes no sense to do. So why have these options that you can turn on at the same time? Makes no sense. The red ones, don't actually do anything because there's only one possible, uh, possible value for it to make things work. So why are they there, right? And similarly, the green ones, they're sort of duplicated. Like they're either for the output directory to put things into or the output name to configure how the name looks like. And again, these are basically duplicated. So I want to fix this. I want to make this a lot easier so that I don't have to remember 65 different configuration settings, but instead remember, well, maybe 50. <laughs> this doesn't improve it a lot, but it's definitely better. Then there's issues with um, doing sometimes breakpoints. What happens if you set a breakpoint on this line and you run your code? What do you think happens? Anyone wants to guess? Nothing. Exactly. The, the correct answer is nothing happens because PHP doesn't think there's code on this line. I can demonstrate that. Not by doing a demo, but by showing it here. So on the right-hand side, you see what PHP's internals actually creates for the PHP code. And I don't want to go through all the different things in there, but you can see that line number four is missing from it. Basically, anything where it says uh, X statement here is where a, a debug breakpoint can happen. So in this case, it can happen on line five, on line nine, and line 11, and nothing else. So if you set a breakpoint on line four, it just gets ignored, which isn't great. So that needs to be improved, clearly. As I said, um, PHP, FPM, and Xdebug, they picked the same port. Xdebug was first by about six months. <laughs> but um, yeah, that isn't easy. 
I actually went through the process of seeing whether I can register the port number with IANA. If you think that process is everything you think about bureaucracy, because it is an uphill battle. I, I've given up on it now. So. Um, also, the protocol currently is not encrypted, right? There's no HTTPS, which isn't great either. So I'm hoping to change it in the future. Now, setting up, starting the debugger is, if you're just running things locally, pretty trivial. You do, basically, what you need to do is set remote enable to one. That's all you need. The remote host, the remote port, those are the default values. So you don't need, you need to do anything here. If you're having a shared development environment, just a simple PHP server running somewhere else, you can make the remote connect back setting. Makes that easy to you. That should be trivial as well. However, in the later years, people start using Vagrant and Docker and all these things. They all add to the complexity of networking between machines, even on your same, on your same physical machine. And that makes a debugger kind of much harder to get going, although the principles are the same. Xdebug needs to talk to your IDE. And the only way I can do that by it knows the IP address or the host name that it can connect to, which isn't always as simple to find out. On the command line, if you want to debug, for example, your unit test, you need to write this complicated invocation that I can remember because I've typed this so many times now, but I can, I can imagine that many of you would have to look this up. This shouldn't be this complicated to you. So there's technical debt in Xdebug code, technical debt in its use with the configuration settings, and lots of things that are just too complicated, unnecessarily complicated. <laughs> now, I did work a little bit on this in the last few years, and that is Xdebug supports this logging feature which is you turn on with xdebug.remote.log equals whatever path you want to put it in. That works most of the time. It doesn't work when you use, when you use a more modern Linux distribution, which uses systemd, for example, which systemd does, if you debug through Apache, it will have its own private temp directory. So even though you specify a file name here, it isn't actually the location where it's going to put a file name, which is highly annoying, but there's no way around it which is a good thing because it's a security feature, but it's frustrating to have to do this. So I'm hoping to change that at some point. But what this log mostly will tell you, if you can find a file, <laughs> is it will tell you exactly every connection attempt that is being made. And it will use the settings that you have done in PHP INI on the machine where XDebug runs, and it will tell them uh, that it's connected to the client with a smiley face, uh, it doesn't do colors in your log file clearly, but that uh, makes the slide a bit more colorful. But it will also tell you any time it couldn't connect to a host and it will tell you exactly what it tried to do. And by looking at that, it should be a lot easier to debug why Xdebug won't be able to talk to your ID. And that's often a networking issue. Uh, yes. Now we have issues with performance. Uh, if you run a code coverage with Xdebug, just to show fans how many of you do that. Well, that's 60%, that's, that's pretty good. You know that it slows down the running of your test significantly. 10, 20 times, something like that. I'm not happy about that. I'm sure you're not happy about it here. Uh, but I certainly am not. But at the moment, the way how Xebic is being written, it's not something that is easy to change. It's not easy to change because I've never thought about these things because who writes big symphony applications where, with like 60,000 function calls, right? I'd never thought, but back in the time when Xdebug was being written all the 17 years ago, this is not how people would write applications. So it wasn't much of a problem then, but this is a problem now. So there's not a lot more things that I need to do to make that actually go away and go faster. But I can't do that until lots of change in the form of refactoring has happened. Now, there's the issue that I have to test with lots of PHP versions. Um, there's about 150 of them here. Uh, every PHP version, but I also need to test it in 32-bit mode, as well as in Z-trend safety mode, as well as, for each of these versions, opcache on and opcache off, because they all generate slightly different behavior. Just show of hands, how many of you use Travis CI to do things? Just a few. How many concurrent 
things do you get on there? It's four or five if you're lucky, right? Now, each of them takes about three minutes, so you can guess where this is going. It just takes hours and hours to do this. So I can't really do this on Travis, even though it doesn't actually have all the PHP versions in there. But this is important because sometimes the internals change enough for my test to s subtly fail. It's not a bug, but it tests slightly fail because you expect the output is slightly different. So all of these things that I've just spoken about, I want to provide solutions for. And the first thing that I started doing is I set up this Xdebug CI thing, uh, which tests, first of all, everything with the latest PHP 7.4 and latest PHP 8, which is PHP's current master branch. Runs that nightly and tells me then if PHP's internals have changed, the tests or the compilation of the Xdebug starts failing. So I know immediately that, oh, something needs to be fixed and I can do that then instead of waiting until PHP 7.4 or 8 gets released and then start working on it because that makes things late, right? Um, there's the big refactor project, uh, which I'll talk, to a, talk about a little bit more in a moment. But that isn't the only thing to solve any issues. I also think that it isn't always necessarily known how the debugging works. Not everybody realizes that it's xdebug running in PHP that needs to talk to your ID instead of your ID making a connection to PHP running xdebug, right? And a whole bunch of the other features that Xdebug has, many of you are probably not familiar with them, even though can, they can be very useful. So I need to be a lot better doing this kind of stuff. And then, of course, I'd like to improve performance. And I can't do that, all that in my spare time. I would like to, but I live in London. There's lots still to do. And I don't want to sit in, behind my computer both doing work as well as all my spare time. I like walking around in the countryside or walking up artist seat for example. So what's the plan? Well, Xdebug 2.8 was going to uh, fix most of the things that uh, I showed you with the improving of the breakpoint behavior, for example. So Xdebug now will, um, if you set a, a breakpoint on your line, the moment the function starts being executed, it will actually find out whether there is a breakpoint that can be set on that line. And if it isn't, it will go down five lines to see whether it's something just below where you set the breakpoint. And if there's nothing there, it will go three or five up to see whether there's one slightly above it. So you can be pretty sure that if you set a breakpoint, it will at least stop. It might not be at the exact same place as you want it, but it will stop. PHP 7.4 is clearly in there. Um, it has to be, because I, I'd like to make sure that works now, of course. And I've set up this local CI. This local CI um, runs pretty quickly. Uh, I have a very big machine under my, uh, under my desk that can run all the 150 configuration, both compiling and xdebug for all of them, as well as running the tests in about 12 minutes, which is pretty quick. It's a lot better than having to do this on Travisware, or if I want to test it on Windows, where I use AppVea. One concurrent request, it takes 30 minutes per run, and I do 12 of them. So that takes so much time. But I sort of need that because I don't run Windows myself, but I still want to run the tests. So all these things are done. Uh, I think I will release Xdebug 2.8. No, I already have done so. Never mind. <laughs> November is being hectic. I did that somewhere last week, I believe. I, I honestly can't remember right now, which is kind of, kind of telling me. But then I started working on Xdebug 3. So I want to do the big refactoring. Uh, I want to chase it in such a way that Xdebug doesn't, you can't enable the features that are conflicting anymore. You put it in a specific mode, and then it will do that really well. So it doesn't do all the unnecessary things that it sometimes now does. Um, so I started working on that. And then, of course, after these things come, I will work on performance improvements. So 2.8, if we're coming back here, there's some other issues there. So we have this bit of code on the left-hand side. So we create a closure on line 4, and we execute line 12. And we define an array on line 6. Now, if you look at the right-hand side, it is the internal representation again. And when we look at it, so where is line 6, for example? Line 6 is not in, anywhere in there, right? There is an X statement on line 7, but there's nothing in there in the closure, for example. It doesn't define A anywhere. Why is that? Anybody want to guess? Well, A is not being put in the PHP internals code because it doesn't do anything. 
the assignment of this variable is fine, but it then immediately goes out of scope. So there's nothing that makes use of the variable. So PHP with opcache op, op optimizations enabled will just optimize this out because of that code. It doesn't do anything. Which isn't great if you set a breakpoint on it and then want to find out why is there no variable A? I clearly just set it in that my code, right? It's very confusing. So what xdebug28 will do is it will turn off xdebug, sorry, opcache's optimizer. It won't turn off op opcache because that'd be a really bad thing to do. Um, so that the assignments that actually don't do anything are still being part of the code that you're trying to debug, which restores at least some sanity, in my opinion. Um, and then, yeah, the local CI. If you want to have a look at what it generates, you can go to xdebug.org slash CI. Please don't do that all at the same time because um, I haven't properly cached that page yet. But there are so many versions that I have to test in there as I've just explained. All right, xdebug3, which is what I'm really here to talk about, is all the new things I want to put in there, uh, make everything better. Some of these things have been done now, uh, clearly it's not been released, and I don't expect a release to happen before somewhere mid next year at the earliest. First of all, I started uh, doing code reorganization. I have lots of functions or lots of, lots of files doing well, quite, quite specific things. Like you can sort of see from these files that the code coverage is done to one file. But the problem is here that anytime I want to open a file, I have to type at least seven characters before I can, do, can use autocomplete, which annoys me a lot. Not only that, it's a big mess. Uh, I mean, if you think intertwined code with strong coupling, that's what Xdebug is. So that's the first thing I've been working on now, and I'm nearly finished with. To so put everything that does a specific feature into a specific directory, and then split it out more and make sure that each of these things is its own unit, not interfering with other things. I have done most of the big things here, but I haven't done some of the smaller bits. Um, like any time a function gets executed in PHP, what Xdebug does, it will build a string out of the function name, and if you've turned it on, the arguments to it. Now, that is useful for showing stack traces or uh, making traces to a file, but you don't want it to do this if you're doing code coverage or profiling because it's work that is never going to be shown anywhere. So that still needs to be removed from this standard thing that it does. So that's where I'm currently at. And I've worked some on, that on the train over here, for example. And then to not have these conflicting things, what I want to do is have the possibility that you turn xdebug into a mode. So it will be a mode that will be off, which means that although xdebug is loaded, there's almost no overhead whatsoever. It wouldn't register any overloaded functions. It wouldn't overload anything uh, in PHP's internals, it's just being loaded, and it will be able to show you that xdebug is loaded. It won't do anything. Then there's the base features, which is the everyday debugging aids. Your stack traces that you see, um, variable displays, the overloaded var dumps, that kind of stuff is in the base mode. I haven't quite figured out yet how to combine that with the debugger mode at the same time. It might be that I will put that into the same one, but I'm not 100% sure yet. So the debugger mode, previously called the remote debugger, which is a silly name because it has nothing to do with being anything remote. It's just a step debugger. So I'll rename that to debugger, which, it, which you put Xdebug in uh, when you're developing applications want to, and you want to debug it. That's probably the mode you probably should be in most of the time. And hence, Anything that is in the base functionality will probably also be enabled if you turn on the debugger. Because performance isn't very important in this case, right? It takes more time for you to click a button than for your whole, to, to single step to the next line, than for your whole script to run most of the time. So performance isn't very important here. Then we have tracing, and tracing is logging every function call with arguments, return types, and variable assignments to a file. Uh, that is very useful for trying to figure out what a code base that you've never seen does, um, which is quite useful for me, my writing demos and things like that. Um, or if it is something really complicated and you don't quite necessarily understand how the flow of an application works, you can turn on the trace and it puts everything to a phone. Um, the information that comes out of this, uh, there you can do that in different formats. There is one that you can easily read. There's also one that produces a tab-separated file. 
which is something that utilities can run through to then plug out information. So there's a file in the contrib directory of xdebug source code, for example, that can read these things and then pro produces a tiny, simple way of doing some profiling. So it can tell you which function took the most amount of time or took the most amount of memory, stuff like that. Um, I haven't quite written a tool that can visualize these big uh, traces, but I think that is something I want to work on at some point. So then we have the profiler. Uh, the profiler currently produces files that kcashcrime can read. I don't think I will change a lot to that. Uh, I've recently added memory profiling here as well. The memory profiling of PHP applications can be very tricky, especially if you have a, a larger application Internally, PHP uses a mechanism called reference counting to make sure that it, it keeps things in memory that needs to be kept in memory and will free things from memory when it doesn't need it anymore. But there are situations where you can create loops in variables. Like if you have an array element that points back to the original array, you create this looping structure, right? Now, PHP can deal with that sort of memory issues by running a garbage collector once in a while. And you can't know up front when this garbage collector is going to run. So sometimes when you do an SGLN function call, it just bumps like the, the amount of things that it thinks it needs to garbage collect over the edge. So even a string length call might sometimes reduce your memory footprint by a few megabytes, which is very confusing and there's nothing much, well, there's something you can do about it, which is turn off the garbage collector, but I don't recommend you do that unless you're a composer, where it actually makes a lot of sense to do, apparently. Um, so the memory profile isn't always as useful, but it still should give you a good indication of where there would be functions or methods that suddenly use up a lot of memory. You'd often find, however, that this is mostly um, including another file through an auto loader, because loading a file to memory without opcache loaded, uh, of course, takes up quite a lot of memory, often a lot more than doing an SGLN or an uh, or creating an array or something. Um, so that's the profiler mode. Then we have the code coverage mode, which is specifically meant to only do the bare necessities to do code coverage. Uh, where at the moment, it still makes use of all of the other things that some of the other bits in Xdebug do, like constructing this function name with all of its arguments. For code coverage, these things don't matter. At the same time, code coverage at the moment, what it does for every time a specific line is being hit, it will add a, array, a PHP array element to an array it does internally. These things take up quite a lot of memory. It is also quite slow to do that. So this algorithm is something I can definitely improve, which I will be doing soon. And then the last thing that I want to add is the time traveler mode. Now the time traveler mode is a combination of the step debugger and the tracing. The tracing at the moment puts everything in a file. It doesn't put everything in there, but it does already put every function call, every variable assignment, and every return value from a function and or method. What it doesn't quite put in there is the source files itself. What I would like to be able to do is when I'm doing step debugging that I can also step backwards or rather sync or seek through the, the whole execution of a script to see its current state. Now, if I would write something around the trace files that would have to be stored in a slightly more uh, optimal format, currently the files for even running Symfony can be several hundred megabytes, which isn't great, but uh, it's text files, so that's how it goes. What I want to do is be able to bundle up that information in there, being able to ship it somewhere else, where you can then run the tra time traveler debugging mode to inspect any single point throughout the whole execution of that script. You won't be able to change anything, uh, but you can at least in inspect everything that has happened, which I think would also be really useful, not only for things you write yourself, but if you have a hosted application, something that you write, but somebody else runs for you, you can also well, turn on this time traveler mode thing, ship us the file, and we can look exactly where a bug might have occurred. And I think, um, I think it would be really useful and definitely a fun thing to work on. I expect that to, that to come later in the XDebug 3 series at some point. Right, so the configuration settings, we already had a look at these. Um, I've already removed one, the ex which is the extended info, hence it being in green. It's gone in, in 2.8 because it doesn't do anything that it doesn't need. 
from the configuration settings that you had previously, let me, you can't really see which one belongs to what except for some of the profiler ones. Uh, I apparently made a typo here. I'm not sure whether it says profiler. Um, copy and paste, that's how it goes. So it, this is quite difficult to find out what belongs to what. So I'm in, going to rename many of these. And while renaming them, also uh, sort of namespace them so you can see which one belongs to what kind of functionality. That of course means that any tutorial you find on the internet for these things is going to be wrong. So I haven't quite figured out yet how to deal with the education uh, aspects of this. Um, but I'll get there at some point. Also, it misses an extra column because none of the uh, debugger, or only half of the debugger options are in here, but I ran out of space on the slide. And yeah, so to improve these things, to make it easier to use, to find it easier to see what setting to make. And also, sometimes there's duplicated information in there, like I don't really need many of the profiler things, for example, because I'll be changing them. And then, as I mentioned, I want to go back to all the problems with performance. Uh, first of all, looking at all the code coverage problems, um, there, is, there are now alternative ways of running code coverage in, uh, for PHP. It is called an extension called PCOF. Um, I don't think it does exactly do the same thing as Xdebug yet, because it doesn't do things like branch coverage and path coverage. Now, this is a feature in Xdebug that probably none of you have used mostly because um, the tools that do do the code coverage for you, like PHP code coverage built into PHP units, doesn't know how to visualize this yet. Uh, that is mostly because it's a really complicated thing to do. What branch and path coverage will do is it will be able to tell you every possible path for your function, which means that every, at every branching point, every if statement or for loop, you'll get a duplicated number of possible branches, branches as well as paths. So that's an exp ex exponential thing, right? 10 if statements means 1,024 different paths. Uh, that takes up quite a lot of time to research, but, but, which is something that Xdebug has to do. And also, how are you going to visualize which of those 1,024 paths, for example, have been followed and which ones haven't been? And also, do you really want to have to write 1,024 tests for this specific method or function to make sure that every possible part has been covered or not? Uh, the answer is probably no, right? It's a lot of things to write. Um, it's also ridiculously slow, so that's not a useful thing either. So that's why I don't see that yet, but I hope to improve that as well, and I, I've been working on. Then on the other side, it's the setup rows with Docker. It's usually Docker that people find difficult to use with, with setting up debugging. And it isn't the problem of Docker itself often, it is the complicated nature of Docker doing its own internal network. And it changes, the IP addresses changes all the time. And although Docker has a Docker for Mac or Docker for Windows, like fake host name, there's no, no one of these things on Linux, for example. They might have fixed that now, but it certainly not fixed that like six months ago. And this isn't something you can necessarily solve in software, right? It needs to be something, people need to understand how the network connections work and the only way how you can do that by, um, by writing good documentation tutorials about this. And I know lots of people have written these things but they're all over the internet and they're not always as accurate or up to date as they could be. Um, so I think I need to take some responsibility there to take care of that myself. All right, so as I said, I can't do this in my spare, I don't want to talk about money too much, but I, earlier this year I left my job and I started doing contracting again with the intention to also start working on Xdebug. That's about half of my time. So I set up some Patreon, got GitHub sponsors, and that, that gets to places. Not quite enough, but I mean, that's how it goes. What I would rather have is, I keep stepping or something and it turns off the screen. So there's a wonky cable here somewhere. It draws my attention. So the, I, don't, I don't really want to charge for XDB, right? I mean, that would solve most of my problems, but it would also mean that people stop using it, which isn't great either, of course. So what I'd rather prefer is that some companies that make use of XDB excessively to then help me uh, be able to spend time on this. 
this has some traction. Uh, it's getting to the point where it is getting about enough. But I think when, when, when doing this kind of things, and I think this is almost more important that I also talk about what I spend my time on. So it is not just, oh yeah, chuck some money over well and see what happens. I think it's important to show what kind of things I'm working on. So I st started keeping like a time log, a time log of basically anything I work on. Um, and publish that online every month. Uh, so you can see what kind is being funded-ish and what I spend my time on. The amount of time I spent on something is still larger than the amount of, uh, of funding I get for it, um, which, well, I mean, that's fine. Uh, it's enough at the moment for me. But every board, every little bit helps, let me put it that way. And then the last thing I want to talk about, I spent also some time on, is talking to PHP uh, developers, P developers of the PHP language um, to see where PHP is going. So I started doing this podcast called phpinternals.news where I talk every week uh, to somebody else to see what is going or is possibly going into the PHP language itself. However, I'm going to take a break until the next year after PHP 7 for us, please. But if you're interested in this, have, lo have a listen. I was going to say have a look. It's not much to look at if it's an audio file, right? But I mean, have a listen. So yeah, that's what I've been working on. Um, Xdebug 3 uh, compiles. It will work with PHP 7.4. It will do exactly the same thing, slightly better. Uh, I haven't worked on any of the performance things, but now the next thing that I'll be starting working on is doing the refactoring of, um, of having all the different functionality being put in the different modes. And the moment I start doing that, configuration settings are going to change, which means that if you want to try this out, and over the next months, there will be performance improvements coming in there, which I'm sure you're very happy to test out, even though it's not released, it's a stable release, because as I said, that will take, well, at least half a year before I get anywhere close to, to having a release candidate, or even an alpha release, I would say. Uh, yeah, I, I hope you find it interesting to see that rest of the journey. Uh, on my blog, every month I'll post a, uh, a, a bunch of information, what I've been working on, what I've been struggling with, and things like that. So if you want to follow me with that journey, I have a website, which is derekrattens.nl. It shows up on the last slide. Right now, this is about what I had to say. Are there any queries or questions? Please, let there be some questions, because I'm a bit faster than I wanted to be. Oh, there's one all the way in the back. The mic, please. No, no, just for the video. It's on. I saw the yeah, thumbs cool. up. <laughs> um, if you've got any questions, you just wait till you get the mic because we're recording it so we can pick up the questions and answers. That'd be grand. Thanks. I think it doesn't really qualify as a question, but as a side comment, in the, <laughs> somewhere in the beginning you said like the private temp directory for your system B for like the log file that you create for oh, yeah. the remote thing. And there's no way around it. That's actually not fully correct. You can tell system need to not use a private directory. It's not recommended to do for actually okay. the security reasons that you mentioned. But can you do that for many codes? Or no, do you need you to do it in the Apache configuration? No, you can set that in the system D configuration. Like there's a right. service file and you can just sure. change that setting. Yeah, that's true. But then I need to explain to people how that works. <laughs> just saying that there's no way around it. So that was not okay. the next. Okay, fair enough. Correct. Thanks, Arne. Anything else? Real questions instead of comments? There's one right there. <laughs> There's always one, eh? There's always one. <laughs> I, I just wondered if you had any um, thoughts about supporting different output formats for like the, the coverage files and the reports, X, the report for uh, test results? Because I have uh, had issues in the past with certain CI providers interpreting those files and Usually, it's do something else. Mm -hmm. So the, the the way how Actibook interacts with the code coverage is that it provides the information to the tool called PHP Code Coverage, which was responsible for creating the output formats. So that isn't something that directly comes out of Actibook, which means I have no control over that. Um, so that's with the code coverage. With the profiler, I have thought about different formats. Uh, what I'm interested in at some point made, made something make like a, a flame graph output out of it. Um, so I've been thinking about that. For the trace files, there's already different formats, but 
I don't think they necessarily interact with other tools. So for code coverage, which one are you struggling with? Oh, sorry. <laughs> questions to um, questions. So it was the, um, the, the test result format mm -hmm. file that was struggling. So it, it comes out as a single file. Yes. I think in this case, as you were expecting for the Clover format, okay. it was expecting separate files for each of the suites or something. So okay. I had to run it through XSL. <laughs> okay, uh, I would suggest you find a bug with the PHP code coverage people. Yeah. Anything else? No, oh, just right there. It's nice and easy. Uh, do you get any other contributors to XDebug, or is there an appetite to get more people contributing? Oh, appetite definitely, uh, but there are, haven't been very many. Um, I have somebody helping out with the website now because that is also 17 year old code. <laughs> and I don't know HTML and CSS, and that is about ready to get launched. Uh, if I wouldn't be speaking at conference all of November, that probably come out next week. But that I have to wait. Uh, as to Xdebug itself, there are a few. Um, at the moment, there is a pull request that is just about finalized. It will need some work, but it's being submitted that allows you to pause debugging. So at the moment, when you do debugging the debug will connect to the ID immediately, but then the whole process is driven from you clicking a button to go to the next line or skip to the next breakpoint or run the whole thing. What you can't do with it is while your script is running, press pause button to then inspect what is happening at the moment. So it is at the moment a pull request for that, uh, which is quite a significant amount of work. I had somebody helping out getting IPv6 support in there. But these things tend to be all around interactions that have little to do with talking to PHP's internals. They're all either related to either networking um, or that kind of thing. And because it's kind of hard to, to know PHP's internals because none of it is documented. So although I would like more contributors helping me out with, with either features or even trying to reproduce bug cases because that isn't always as simple as it seems. It's lovely that you have your application break at some point, runs in a Docker container, but I have no idea how to debug that, right? I mean, I don't know, I don't know what to start sometimes even. Um, and that takes up a lot of time. And I'd rather spend my time improving Xdebug than debugging somebody else's code, for example. Um, but yeah, there's very few contributions. If you look at the GitHub stats, I do 98% of it. And it's been like that for a long, long time. But yes. If you're interested, I'm happy to, uh, to teach more people, PHP's internals, to help me out with these things. Yeah, absolutely. Fortunately, we've got a talk on PHP internals later on in the day, right? Oh, yeah, that's, I, was, yeah so I should mention that. Give you a head start. I, there's a talk later in this room about contributing to PHP itself, to the PHP core. Sorry, am I just saying what you were going to say? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, uh, so if you're interested in doing that, that, that will be a good uh, prerequisite for contributing to XDebug as well. So following the question about contributing to XDebug, yeah. uh, XDebug is running C, uh, XDebug is, is PHP, uh, very related to PHP internals, yes. but what do we need to know to contribute to XDebug? Well, you need to know C well, um, as well as so, uh, uh, as an example, for Xdebug to come up with a function name, that's about 400 lines of code to even find out how to represent what a function name is, because it can be a method, a class, a closure, a generator, an evil function, and includes pain. There are so many different cases to do that. So that's kind of difficult because it's, PHP doesn't necessarily have APIs for all the things. It's just a bunch of memory that you then have to interpret, for example. But code coverage gets even harder because for each branch point, I need to look at the, uh, what the internal opcodes done, the, the list of assembly instructions that you probably saw earlier. You need to check for each specific one what all the possible in inputs and outputs are, and none of that is particularly well documented. So it requires a lot of being able to read that kind of code in PHP, and that is, is not easily accessible. I wish it was, but it isn't. And that is examples there. I can give you many more, but this is not an easy thing to do. <laughs> All right, anything else? Oh. Over here. Yeah, it's great. We're making you do your exercise this morning. <laughs> um, do you have any recommendations 
is um, something in the current release, some functionality that might be useful or interesting that people might not be aware of? In the upcoming 2.8 release, there is no new functionality in Xdebug besides some of the fixes for the breakpoints. Because I've been working on more things towards Xdebug 3.0, and I want to do that first, so that's why I've not been spending adding features too. What about just in the core palette? Um, there is nothing really new in there at the moment. Because it was the, the lack of time, not being able to spend time on it. But I have that now, so I can do that. All right. There's Thanks. one more hand somewhere around here. He's gotten a plus twice already. <laughs> <laughs> or she. Um, with the time travel and debugger, you said you can't go back and change things. Yes. But if you write it to a certain point, say like before you write something to a file, can you play through the code again and it will write to the file again? No, it would not play to the file again. So the intention is that you can inspect every variable, uh, variable value, that's a difficult thing to say, as it was at that point, but it will not execute the code again. Because writing to a file twice is kind of a bad thing to do, or what is even worse, deleting things from a database twice. Right? So yeah. Thanks. So yeah, the intention is not to actually execute the code, but it would look like you're executing the code. Does that make sense? Yes. Oh, there's one more right here. <laughs> Next one in the far corner, please. <laughs> just down the road. Yeah. You just down the road. Yeah. <laughs> Further to that question, I just wondered, is there any intention to ever having a, a, a real-time step backwards? Uh, it is really difficult to do because you need to make sure that PHP itself isn't designed for doing that. Um, as I explained yesterday in my deep dive talk, if you have a for each loop, it does things in a specific order. And if you don't do it in that order, it just gets messed up because PHP itself doesn't know how to do with it. So stepping backwards can be done in only very few cases, but even then going forwards again might not work. So it is not something that I think that can be reliably done in PHP except for recording what the internal state was in every case. So it might be possible to do step back, but it wouldn't actually step back. It would just show you the, the internal state at that point. Of course, that is going to require, um, okay, I broke something here, require support in IDEs. Oh, definitely broke something. There we go. Um, so yeah, um, but that's, that's how that is. Anything else? No? OK, I have one more slide. I didn't have to walk over for that because I have a click on this. Uh, the slides I'll put on, uh, I think they actually are already online on the first line, uh, first URL. The QR code should go there. I can make that a bit bigger. It's easier to scan. If you have further questions, feel free to email me or add me on Twitter. Uh, if you have suggestions to improve an XDBook, I'm very happy to hear about these as well. If you have bug reports, it's at bugs.xdebug.org. If you're interested on, on sponsoring me on Patreon or GitHub, I'm also very happy for you to do that. Very happy. Um, having said that, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. I hope you are as excited about Xdebug 3.0 as I am. Uh, if not, then uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure what to say about that. And enjoy the rest of the conference today. <laughs>